Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another lesson in seventh grade social studies. We are now moving on to our unit about Arabia, the Middle East, Southwest Asia. It's known by many different titles. Um, and today, our essential question is going to be, what is the geography of the Arabian Peninsula like? Um, so that will be your essential question across the top of your Cornell notes. And just so you know, this dovetails almost exactly with what you would find in Chapter 7 of your History Alive textbook. So go ahead and get that written down, and I will move on to the next slide. So, when we begin a new chapter, we always ask ourselves what the basic facts are. So your first left side question, what are the basic facts? And this corresponds to Section 7.1 in your book. First of all, you need to know about the Prophet Muhammad, who is the founder of Islam, one of the world's great religions. Uh, he was born on the Arabian Peninsula in about 570 in the Common Era. Um, the Arabian Peninsula is the southwest corner of Asia, and it's located between the Red Sea, which is right here, and the Persian Gulf, which is over here. So all of this is the Arabian Peninsula. Um, and as you can see, there's more than one country there, although Saudi Arabia is definitely the largest. Most of the people living in Arabia in the 6th century were Arabs. So when you hear the term Arab, you are referring to someone who is from the Arabian Peninsula. So just here's a clue for you kids. Iran is not on the Arabian Peninsula, so Iranians are not Arabs. They're Persians. From the air, if you were to fly over the Arabia, Pe Arabian Peninsula, you would see vast deserts dotted by oases, and we'll be talking about that in a moment. Um, there would be coastal plains along the shores, and that would be where most people lived, um, along the southern and western coasts, and um, mountain ranges separated the coastal plains from the deserts. Uh, the overwhelming majority of population centers would be fairly close to the coast because this is a very hot, inhospitable climate. It's a hot, dry area and a very challenging place to live. In fact, there are some parts of Saudi Arabia that are basically uninhabitable. So. So some key geographic features of the Arabian Peninsula are located on this map. So let's take ourselves a little look-see. First of all, this is the Arabian Peninsula itself. I am circling it with the arrow. Um, to the west, we have the Red Sea. Um, to the south, we have the Gulf of Aden. And to the east, we have the Persian Gulf. Uh, the Arabian Peninsula is generally considered to end at the base of the Zagros Mountains. So the Zagros Mountains would be in northeastern Iraq and western Iran. So this basically right here would be the northeastern boundary of what we would consider uh, Arabia. Down here to the southeast we have the Indian Ocean. And way up here to the northwest, we have the Mediterranean Sea. Over here is Egypt and more largely Africa. And so the boundary between Asia and Africa is right here. So our next left side question, what is the importance of the importance of the Arabian Peninsula. Mr. Blumenthal had a typo there, but we're not going to retype that and re-record this video. The question is, what is the importance of the Arabian Peninsula? So ignore all the extra letters there. And you can chuckle because Mr. Blumenthal did not uh, spell check his work. First thing you need to know is that Arabia lies at the crossroads of Asia, Africa, and Europe. So it is a transit zone for trade between all of those continents, and that therefore makes it extremely important. Technically, it's part of Asia, but it has a lot of African and a lot of European influence. So, a great deal of trade passed through this region, as I just said, and still does. 
As early as 2000 BCE, before the Common Era, the people of Arabia served as middlemen in trade between these lands. So very similar to what we learned about Ghana. Ghana was centrally located. Arabia was centrally located. And as a result of that central location, um, Arabia was extremely important. So knowledge, ideas, technology, and goods flowed through Arab lands. And this made Arabians smart. It made Arabians rich. And it made Arabians powerful. And if you're smart, you're rich, and you're powerful, that probably means you're going to have a lot of influence. What is the desert like? Um, this is probably the most inhospitable desert on the planet Earth, with the possible exception of the Sahara. So first thing you know is about three-fourths of the Arabian Peninsula is covered by desert, which includes vast seas of sand, plains, and plateaus. And a plateau is an area of flat land at a high elevation. In case you didn't know what a plateau was. Bedouins are nomadic people that controlled the val valuable trade routes that linked towns and villages. So Bedouins did not stay in one place. They were nomadic, um, and they controlled the trade routes. Uh, merchants operated caravans that carried goods across the desert. You pretty much couldn't survive unless you were in a caravan um, because then you had a large group of people um, that could help you if you got parched or ran out of food. Whereas if you were traveling it by yourself, you'd be like R2-D2 and C-3PO and Tatooine desperately trying to find the nearest town. Wouldn't be a good situation. Our next left side question, what is, or you could say what was, the role of the oases? And there's a lovely picture of an oasis right there. You're traveling through the desert, you have no vegetation in sight, and then all of a sudden there's water, there's palm trees, and you think you've gone to heaven. The desert is actually dotted with these oases where fresh water is available, and that fresh water usually comes from underground which is what allows the vegetation to grow there. Uh, if these oases did not exist, it would have been almost impossible to travel across the desert. Um, they were important because they provided plant life and shade as well as water. Um, and they just happened to be spaced out in such a way that you could travel from one to another like dots across the desert. And you would essentially travel dot to dot to dot. So towns tended to develop near these oases, uh, and they were all linked by tracks through the desert. So they were like little roads through the desert connecting these very small towns and these oases. Otherwise, it basically would have been impossible to live, survive, or even travel through the desert. So it's an eerie coincidence that those oases happened to be there at all. Switching slides. What are the coastal plain areas like? Well, that's, that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Po coastal plain run along the coast of the entire Arabian Peninsula, so along the Persian Gulf um, and along the Red Sea, as well as to the south. Um, and there were inland plateaus that were inland from the Red Sea, but they were also kind of separated by mountains. So you had the coastal areas, you had the towns, and then the mountains usually rose up um, further inland from the towns. And that's pretty much still the way it is. Um, you wanted to live near the coast, A, because you could cool off at the water, uh, and B, because the water was a better way to travel um, than across the land. And finally, we have the mountains. And the mountains, like I just said in the previous slide, um, run along the western and southern edges of the Arabian Peninsula just inland from the coast. So you would have the coastal areas, you would have the towns and cities, and just inland from that you have these very, very dry, hot mountains. And they separate the coastal plain areas um, from the inland deserts that are inhospitable and virtually uninhabitable. Now, not very good places to live at all. In fact, it's virtually impossible for humans 
to live in those areas because they have absolutely no resources whatsoever. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this has been a brief but important summary of the geography of the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, most of what we're going to be learning about the next three or so weeks is about the Arabian Peninsula and the cultures that evolved in that area. Uh, it's often called the Middle East. It's also called Southwest Asia. Uh, I would now like you to briefly write a summary of everything you've learned in today's notes. Uh, if you could have one sentence for each left side question, chances are you will have a fantastic summary. Uh, and with that, this is Mr. B. Once again, checking out till next time uh, when we will learn some facts about Southwest Asia, the Arabian Peninsula, otherwise known as the Middle East.